Now that we have an understanding of the background of MIDI, it's important to consider what the actual practical outcomes are. Yeah, I mean, those practical outcomes are what are important for you know, composers, sound engineers and producers and are ultimately you know, what enable us to be creative. So when we're thinking about MIDI, you know, initially what we saw was the adaption of existing electronic music devices and then you know, those devices then spawned off other new kinds of devices as well. That's right, and during that initial period of modernisation, what we saw was the existing devices having MIDI capabilities added to them. So I guess firstly we had the keyboard, a uh, multi-instrumental device, the synthesizer, something that could make or modify sound, and also the drum machine, so something that could sample a standard rock drum kit, for example, or percussion. Yeah, and we also had, you know, as we mentioned before, you know, a whole raft of new performance instruments. And if we think about those, um, you know, initially there were, for example, electronic wind instruments, which were inspired by traditional uh, wind instruments, but rather than outputting sound like a traditional instrument would, you know, it would output MIDI data and that would allow, you know, an, an instrumentalist who was familiar with those instruments to play this new instrument in a conventional way that they were used to. We also had the rise of MIDI guitars as well, so a very similar kind of um, situation where you had a guitar that rather than outputting its own sound would actually output MIDI data to trigger a synth. And during that time we also saw the advent of the hardware MIDI sequencer which allowed the recording and storage of MIDI data and naturally the playback, uh, which would later go on and inspire computer-based sequences. Yeah, I mean, MIDI sequencing was really pivotal uh, as a technology really for composers where, you know, they could play things in in their own time as a set of MIDI instructions and then use those to be played back by a synthesizer. So much like we had in the previous situation with recording where you could, you know, play something, record it and then, you know, build up a track from multiple recordings, for example, the composer was actually able to, you know, play in a sequence and then have that sequence play back or convert it into music notation as well. And I guess finally we saw the burgeoning of controller systems that would allow people to interface directly with the computer, whether it be a keyboard, a bank of pads, a fader or a knob box, to the development of experimental instrument controls. So what we have, you know, if we think about the last 30 years or so uh, of MIDI is something that went from being a communications protocol to actually influencing a whole bunch of different areas of music technology as we know it today. And in our next video, Stephen's going to present another music revolutionary segment where he's going to talk about an iconic Australian composer and the player piano, you know, one of those core cool technologies that ultimately influenced MIDI.